So we're at Twin Ponds Park in Shoreline and we're going to demonstrate the use of premise-free proofs in predicate logic. So we have a formula for every x. If x is f, then x is f. Obviously a tautology. And Mark is going to prove it using a premise-free proof. So he'll prove it true using no premises at all. And that will show that this is a theorem of the system. Uh, and since we know that every theorem is a tautology, or a logically true statement, or a necessarily true statement, the, the premise-free proof will prove that the statement is a necessary truth, or a tautology, or a logical truth. So I'll, I'll uh, write, and Mark will tell me what to write. What do you want to do? Well, let's see. I don't have any premises to work with, yeah. so I've got to start with something. So why don't you put a one down there, and I'll okay. start off with an assumption. Notice that this isn't part of the proof. Right. I, I, it's not part of yeah. the proof, it's just what we have to prove. I'm not going to use that. That's my goal, my yeah. target. So yeah. I've got to start off with an assumption. Now, the first step takes us a little bit of thinking here. Um, what I'm imagining is, is if I could get this conditional, fx, horseshoe, fx, I could do UG and I'd get what I'm looking for. Good. So what I'm thinking is I want to aim for that conditional. I want that thing. That's going to be my personal goal is to get that. And I know that if my goal is a conditional, I can use conditional proof oftentimes to get that thing. So given that this is my goal, knowing if I get this, I can do UG and be done. Since that's my goal, I'm going to assume the antecedent, fx. So, so you're going to do a conditional proof. You're do a conditional proof, and with conditional proof, you assume the antecedent of what you're aiming for. So let's do that. Let's write okay. down fx. So I'm going to indent, yeah. and I'm going to write down fx, and I'm going to write assume premise. Okay. Okay. So we have a, so we're an assume it. premise, yeah. but not a real premise, because it's going to be discharged. I don't know this is true. What we're going yeah. to see is what would happen if this was true. Right. This is an experiment. <clears throat> now, what I'm looking for now, since you assume the antecedent of your goal, then you try to find the consequent. That's what you do with conditional proof. I'm not trying to find an fx. Well, in a sense, I've got one there, but I need to find an fx here. There's a, a number of ways we can do this. One thing you can do is say add an fx to line 1. So I'm going to take my line 1 add whatever I want, and I'm going to simply going to add an fx. So give me fx, wedge, fx. Okay. fx, wedge, fx, by, by addition, addition on 1. Yeah. Well, we can add, use a wedge and add uh, to anything we want. Mm -hmm. And the reason I did that is because now I can do tautology uh, just to get fx. Good. So line 3 would be fx, and I get that through tautology. Very good. Tautology applied to line two. Tautology says if you have a P wedge of P formula, you can replace it with P. Okay, okay good. Now, the idea is if this is true, if this assumption is true, then this must be the case. Conditional proof lets me now discharge by saying if fx, then fx. So fx, horseshoe fx, through conditional proof. So now I'm going to disindent, is that right? Yeah and assert the antecedents that we started with, or the formula we started with, horseshoe, the, cons the, the formula we reached, and I'll write CP 1 through 3. Yes. Okay. Notice the dash, because you're appealing this entire sequence. Not just appealing the lines 1 and 3, but that entire sequence, so 1 through. To justify writing this. Yeah. Well, that's not the thing I'm aiming for ultimately, but it was the goal I set for myself. But I figured if I could get this thing here, I could then do a UG on this mm -hmm. to get the, my ultimate goal. And I can do UG because UG works on variables. Mm -hmm. I'm not breaking any UG restrictions here that I'm right. aware of. Right. So let's go ahead and do UG on line 5. Okay. That'll give me universal X, then in parentheses, FX, horseshoe FX. And that would be UG4. UG on 4. And we're done with that one. Very good. Um, You'll notice it, it looks a little odd because you don't have any premises up here. A lot of people think, oh, it's, it looks weird. But it's really just using CP or sometimes IP, indirect proof, the same way. The same kind of restrictions and rules apply. It just looks a little funny. You're just starting from pure scratch with nothing but the assumptions. So it looks like this thing has to be true almost out of thin air. And if it's true out of thin air, then you know it has to be true. That's one. That's a nice way to put it. It's it's true out of thin air in a sense. And here's another way to think of it. Um, we've derived this validly, 
So it's true. We've proven it true. Proven it true on the basis of what? Well, in a sense, nothing. But notice that I could write premises up here, and I could write any formulas I wish up here. But as, you didn't need them. As premises, I wouldn't need them. But what's interesting is what that shows is that this is true no matter what is true. Mm -hmm. I could write any premises up here and then continue and get this. So in a sense, we could say this is true no matter what is true. In other words, it's true in all cases, yeah. which makes it necessarily true or logically true. Uh, or it's a tautology. And because it's been proven by a premise-free proof, it's a theorem of our system. We use the word logically true to mean a statement that can be tr proven true using just the methods of logic without reference to the material world, the external world, if you wish. And so this is called logically true or a tautology. Okay, so good luck with premise-free predicate proofs.